right, and welcome back to the audio demonstration portion of our DOFR A188-2 overview. Um, last time we kind of went over the basics, the lay of the land, so to speak, overview of all the functions and the features on the front panel of the BBD. Uh, this time around we're going to be kind of doing some demonstrating here um, and kind of hearing what some of the uh, things that we talked about actually sound like and how you can use them possibly in a mix. Uh, we're going to start out with a very basic demonstration of the stages and kind of hear what some of the different stages sound like. Uh, you know, compare a low numbered stage to a high numbered stage. Hear what the difference in sound is like. Uh, maybe adjust a little bit of delay clock um, and so forth. Uh, as you can see, I've already set up a little bit of this. We have output one and output two already being patched out. And so that's what I'm going to be recording from. Uh, I've already done a little bit of setup with my input level, so that is for the most part going to be set. Um, the next part is going to be just setting up my patch. Um, you may notice there's a lot of modules here, and these are what I'm going to use to produce sound, as well as one other module up up, up here above the camera uh, that's actually going to be outputting my clock and my notes. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail in these modules. Uh, if you're familiar with my videos, you'll know that I have actually detailed uh, demonstrations of each one of these modules, so the A131 VCA, the A140 Envelope Generator, the A110 Standard VCO, and the A149 Quantized Stored Random Voltages. So if you have uh, detailed questions about those or you want to know more about those, I invite you to watch some of those videos that are floating around out there on YouTube. Uh, this time around, all I'm going to do is just kind of jump in and start patching, get my patch going, and get some sound into the A188-2. So the first thing I'm going to need, I'm going to get my notes from here, and uh, then they're going to be input into my VCO. So to create notes over here, I'm going to actually need to patch clock out. So I'm getting a clock out from my uh, sequencer up there off camera, and I'm feeding it into my clock in right there. I see a little bit of movement on my lights over here that tells me that the notes are being outputted. So I need to patch those notes into my, uh, my input here uh, of my VCO. And these notes are going to then be fed out into my VCA. So for that, I'm going to choose a couple of waveforms. This time around, I'm going to do a, uh, let's see, we'll do a pulse wave uh, into audio in one. And then I'm going to do a triangle wave. And then go to input two. And then I'm going to take the output of my VCA and I'm going to go into the input of my BBD module. Uh, so here we go. And we're not going to hear anything because my gain over here is not actually being triggered yet. Uh, so I'm going to use the A140 right here to trigger my gain. And the way I'm going to do that is I need a gate to go into my envelope generator. Otherwise, this is not going to move volume at all. Uh, but the envelope generator I can use to shape my sound. So I'm going to take an output from my triggers up here. Let's see, where are my triggers? There we go. And I'm going to patch them right into my gate. You'll know that something is coming out of here because this light will start to go on uh, at, a, at an interval. So there we go. So my gates are coming in. Now all I have to do to get sound is patch from my output of my A140 right into the CV input of my A31, and we'll start getting some sound. So here we go, just making sure input level's there, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to patch. And there's our basic random notes coming into our VCO. Um, I can shape my sound with the A140. So if I want to shape that a little bit. And I'm not going to do too much of that, I just kind of want to get a basic uh, patch going on there. Um, I like this rate of random notes, so we're just going to keep with those. Uh, over here on my BBD module, we have original signal coming out of both now. Um, all my dials, I'm going to just double check these, are all set to zero, so we should have no BBD signal going out of either one of these outputs. We're going to start fairly simple. We're going to start with uh, sort of a demonstration of the high stage and then the low stage uh, on one channel, and then we'll get a little more complex as we go along. So let's start to listen to what it sounds like 
uh, adjusting in the 3328 range. So we're going to bring that up a little bit. And we should hear very little or nothing because I'm only patching out original signal. Here we go. I'm going to bring that up. Should start to hear some delayed signal. We hear a little bit, but probably the reason we're not hearing more is because our delay clock might be a little bit too high. So it's too close to the 8. So if I bring this down, should start to get a little more pronounced delay effect. I think around 5 I heard some very interesting effects. So there is our 3328 sound of the positive variety going to our BBD out and then out of output one. Output two is just outputting original signal, as you can see right there. So we're actually hearing a mix uh, of audio. We're hearing the original and the delayed signal. So you can definitely hear that there's a difference there. Okay, I'm gonna bring it closer to the 4.5 range, which is technically still within spec. So we're getting some nice kind of effects going on here. And then if, now let's just go all out and go into uh, the Bermuda Triangle of our delay clock settings. Here it's kind of filling in those little gaps in the random notes. Let's go back to original signal. So that's our original signal. And let's pop over to BBD. So it sounds to me like almost the notes are chasing each other, kind of around maybe, I don't know, circle, carousel, whatever you want to think of. So and that's just barely outside of the range that's technically within spec. Let's let's go a little farther out for some more interesting effects. Starting to get a little more crunchy type sounds. You'll also notice there's kind of just a kind of a sustained kind of hum or pitch or noise that's happening. That is the clock noise coming in to the signal. Uh, since it's operating outside of technically the, the in-spec region, uh, you're starting to get a little bit of the, the clock noise feeding into the signal. Uh, at this point, if you wanted to, you could feed this out into a filter and then kind of filter out that, that noise. Uh, or you could, you know, maybe filter out some of the aliasing that's going to happen as we go a little farther into that region. Just go all out and go into the slowest delay clock setting. So, just just to kind of play around with, uh, let's actually hear what we would hear if only we were listening to output two. So I'm gonna actually unpatch output two. You can hear kind of the difference because we were actually mixing a little bit of the original with it. So let's bring that up a little bit. And then let's mix a little bit of the original back in. We'll just patch in output two. Let's go in the other direction. Let's go back into the other side of what's considered in spec within around 8, around the 3 o'clock position. 
And they were kind of getting a mild flanging type sound. And you just kind of find that happy place where you like the way it sounds. And then you go from there. Um, now, we've only been adjusting in the positive direction. We haven't added any of the negative component yet. So let's actually hear what some of that sounds like. I'm going to bring it up to zero. So we're back to original sound. And then I'm going to bring it over into the negative side. So we're getting negative uh, component of the 3328 stages going into our signal. So we should have kind of a mild flanging type effect, but in the um, in kind of the closer to the eight position. So let's bring it down a little bit. around five. Let's bring it down. And just for kicks, let's just hear what it sounds like without output two. There we go. And now let's put output two back in. Okay, let's go a little farther. Slower delay clock. There you can kind of hear it starting to get very gritty, a bit crushy. I really like this region over here. Let's bring it down even lower. But right there in that kind of lower region over here where the delay clock is the slowest, the clock noise actually becomes very, very noticeable. And you can you can obviously hear that. Okay. I love the sound of that when you're manually adjusting the delay clock. So we'll have to do a little bit of modulation later on to kind of hear some of that. So I'm going to come back to the zero position. Now that we've done a little bit of the 3328 variety of BVD signal, um, let's actually go in the other extreme and hear what it sounds like when we use the 396 variety. So let's play around with that a little bit. And we'll keep it at the five position just for now and then we'll adjust it to taste a little bit later. So let's add a little bit of the positive component of the 396. Okay, and there we're getting a little bit of chorusing going on. Let's hear just the chorusing. I'm gonna unpatch audio output too. All right, let's patch it back in. Okay, and let's bring it up a little bit closer to maybe uh, 8 o'clock or the 8 setting. Now we're getting a very mild kind of flanging type effect. And I'll bring my BBD all the way up. Alright. Okay, we're covering good ground here. So let's kind of move it over into the top range, around 4.5. We start to hear our clock noise come back in. Very subtle at first, but it will get louder as we go into the lower positions of this. Kind of partial to that right there, that kind of crunching kind of ghost tones happening right after. Kind of adding subdivisions. Let's go a little further. So let's listen to that without output two. And then with output two. And let's go all the way down to the bottom. 
You can really hear the clock noise right there. Let's go all the way down to zero. Very kind of crunchy, distorted type sound coming in. And we haven't even added any feedback yet. Keep that in mind too. All right, so let's bring this up to the zero position. And then let's bring it into the negative component. We'll work our way backwards this time. We're in the slowest position of the delay clock in the negative component of that, the 396. Now move our way up. Okay, so we're at about the five o'clock setting. Let's move closer to eight. Right at about three o'clock. There we get kind of a nice little flangey effect. I'm gonna adjust my distribution just a little bit just to kind of vary the sound a little. So there we have it, 396. 